ladies and gentlemen and ape engineers, we're going to get started on part three, the wheel. So this is what we're going to make. It's going to be the center point. It's going to go inside tire number one and tire number two. So as usual, our first step is to make a new project. It's going to be metric because that is the measurement measurements used in science, and it's going to be a standard millimeter inventor part. And then we're going to click Create. Okay, and so our first next step, as always, is to go to the 2D sketch, 2D sketch, and we're going to do the XZ plane, and we're going to click on that. Okay, so now we're going to do a circle as from a center point. So we're going to click on the center and drag, and we're going to type in 30. No, no, no. It's got to be the same size as the tire center of the tire, so it's got to be 70 millimeters. And we're going to hit enter. And it's too big, so I'm going to use my scrolly wheel. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to zoom out, and I'm going to finish that sketch, and then I'm going to extrude it. And it's going to be it has to be the same as it has to be the same as the tire. So we're going to have 24 millimeters, and I'm going to click OK. All right, so that's our start. So now we can move this thing around, and we're going to. So the one thing that you can do in Autodesk Inventor is you can draw right on surfaces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right, I'm going to hit escape. I don't know, some weird thing, I don't know. So I'm going to right click and make a new sketch on this surface. So I'm drawing right there on the surface. Oh, you know what I messed up on? So I'm going to go back because I messed up on this extrusion. Okay, so let's, uh, I'm going to hit finish on this sketch and I'm going to jump back to this extrusion. So I'm going to double click on it to edit it. And what I did wrong was I made it extrude in one direction. I needed to make it symmetrical. So click on that thing, make it symmetrical. So instead of going one direction, you can see that it extruded it both directions from the center. And that's important because, well, well, we'll you'll see it later. I'm going to click OK. But it's important because if you go to the origins and you look at this plane, you wanted to make sure it extruded th equally this way and this way from the plane. OK? OK, so let's go back to this sketch, sketch number two. OK, so what we had done is we had right clicked and we drew on let me maybe we'll just finish that and delete it and start over okay so I'm gonna right click on the sketch and I'm gonna hit delete okay so we want to make a new sketch okay so I'm gonna hit escape I'm gonna right click I'm gonna draw right on this surface okay and I'm gonna go to my line tool and I'm just gonna draw a line something like that hit hit right click and click OK I'm gonna draw another line towards the center like that it doesn't really matter I'm gonna right click and say OK it doesn't matter what they look like right now because we're going to add all the constraints later. All right. Now we're going to do an arc. Now this is important. See how that little dot is yellow? So when I find the end point, it turns green. And if I cl click there, it turns green. Now see how it turned green? It's, right now it's not. So what I need to do is zoom in so I find that end point right there. It's very important that I find it. I won't do it. Oh, man, it's having it's struggling. So we got to find that end point, and it's going to turn it green. No? I'm going to really zoom in. See if I can get it. It's not doing it. Super weird. I'm going to have to I don't I'm going to have to figure this out. That's super weird. Uh, for whatever reason, I cannot get that thing to work. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit escape. I'm going to click on that thing and I'm going to hit delete. And I'm going to try it again cuz we've got to get those things to line up. So I found the green and I go over here, and there it is. Okay, nope. There it is. I click, and I create an arc. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to find the green. I'm going to click. It has to be green. Oh, there it goes. So if you can't find it, sometimes it's helpful to zoom in and get it, and then you're going to create an arc. Okay, and then we're going to use the rolly tool, scroll out. So it lo should look something like that. Now we're going to make some constraints to get it to look the way we want. So we're going to go to our line tool. And this one is going to be a construction line, which means it's a line that helps us build, but it's never actually going to show up in the final thing. So I click. So let me make sure again. Let me undo that. It's got to be. It's got to be green. There you go. Green, and then green on the center. We're going to snap it to that center point, and then we're going to snap it over here. So it's got to be green, green, green. Okay. And then I'm going to do another line. I'm going to draw another construction line from here to the center point as well. Okay. And then I'm going to click OK. All right, so what I'm going to do with these things is I actually had done a pretty good job of lining these things up. But if I, if I grab these points 
and go like this, you can see it's not lined up. It's not pointing towards the center. If I click this and I move it around, it's not pointing towards the center anymore, and I want it to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this constraint. It's called a collinear constraint. And I click on my real line, and then I click on my construction line, and it forces it to be pointed towards the center. And I'm going to do the same thing again. Okay, I'm going to click on my regular old line. I'm going to click on my construction line. Okay, so now let's take a look and see what this does. I'm going to right-click and hit OK to be done with that tool. And if I move things around, you can see that line's always still forced to be pointing at the center. If I move this line around, if I move this line around, no, it won't move that. That line won't move. If I move, okay, there we go. If I move this line around, it's forced to be pointed at the center. Okay, and that's good. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a dimension from this line over to this construction line. Oh, no, I'm not going to do that yet. Actually, let's do this. Forget that. What we're going to do is we're going to constrain this to this so that it has the exact same center point. So they'll be kind of more parallel. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the concentric constraint. We're going to click on our good circle that we like, and then we're going to click on this arc, and it forces it to be lined up. And then we're going to do it again. We're going to click on this thing again, and we're going to click on this arc. And so if I hit escape to get out of that tool, if I make it increase it, you can see it stays with the same center point. And if I click on this, it stays with the same center point. So it's always having that as a center point. OK, now I'm going to do a dimension here. I'm going to dimension it from this line to this construction line that I did. And I'm going to say that I want it to be 30 degrees. And I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do a dimension line from this one to this one. Okay, and I'm going to say I want it to be 50 degrees. So type in 50, enter. And so we have these degrees. Okay, so that looks good. So if I hit escape um, to get out of that tool, click off it. So now what I'm going to do is an, one more constraint. And so this one's called the coincident constraint. And I'm going to lock this. Oh, no, before I, I can't lock this thing to this thing. i got to get rid of this. So this was helpful, got us this far. But I'm going to click on that and hit delete. And so it deleted the, not only the construction line, but it also uh, deleted the constraint that was there. So now it's going to give us a little bit more freedom mo to move this around. And so I'm going to go to the coincident constraint. I'm going to click on that corner. And then I'm going to click on this construction line. Okay, so I'm going to click OK to get to be done with that tool. So now if I move this around, you can see that it moves that point up and down along this construction line, right? But again, this thing stays curved along this. This thing st stays curved along that. Okay, so that's good. So if I click off of it, you can see that this is still green, this is still green, this is still green. So it means there's so certain things that are not constrained. There's some things that can move, and we want to get them to where they don't move because, um, well, we just don't want them to move because we want them to be stay steady. So what we're going to do is we're going to go a dimension, okay, and we're going to click, and this the size of this is going to be 30 millimeters, and then we're going to do the same thing, dimension this one, and the size of this is going to be 20, and we're going to click OK. All right, and so that is the sketch we need. That's the geometry we need, so we're going to finish that sketch. Okay, and then we're going to go to our extrude. And so we're going to, we don't, do, actually don't want it to extrude this way. So we're going to make this, a, instead of a join, we're going to make it a cut. Okay, and now if we look on this thing, it's going to cut 24 millimeters, which is all the way through. And so we can click OK here, or we can click OK here. And so if we take a look at this, we r rotate it around, we see that we've cut made a hole all the way through it okay and now for our wheel we want to soften these edges so we're going to go to our fillet and it has a two millimeter fillet which is what we're going to stick with so we want to fill it that and 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 we're going to click OK and so we're going to revolve it around to see what it looks like yeah rounded everything I wanted to so that's good okay so on the next one we want to take these holes that we put through, and we want to put six more. And we want to we want to make a pattern around, and so we're going to do a circular pattern. So we're going to click on this tool, 
and we have to select the feature we want. So the feature that we want is this geometry right here. And we want to also get the fillets. So we're going to hit shift and we're going to make sure we click right there and get the fillets as well. And the rotation axis is going to be the center point of the circle, which also happens to be the Y axis. So if I click on that, it shows you, it gives you a little preview. Yeah, there's all six and we can make more or less. If you want five, you can. If you want four, that's fine. And I'm going to click OK. And so it, around that center point, which happens to be the Y axis, it made those. Let's take a look at that Y axis a little bit. So if, I think you might be able to see it better. So you can see that that Y axis is that center point. Okay. All right. So we have, so far we have, a, we have done a pretty good job. We've got the wheel going. But now there needs to be a, basically a pipe that goes through there and some places for some bearings. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to make a hole through this thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the hole tool and say, hey, I want a hole kind of right here in the center of this thing. And we have some choices here. So the, the depth, the width, I mean, is going to be 22 millimeters. So we type 22, and that makes the hole bigger. And then we didn't really necessarily center it on anything, so we're going to do a reference. And so the first reference is we want it centered on this. And so it moves it right directly in the center. Then we're going to click OK. And so you can see we made a hole all the way through it. Now we have a, hole, a place for our pipe to go through, but we're going to have some bearings in here. And so we need a place for those bearings. So we're going to right click on this surface and we're going to make a new sketch right there on that surface. And we're going to go back to our circle tool. And we're going to make a circle right from that center point, And it's going to be 30 millimeters. Okay. And we're going to finish that sketch and we're going to basically extrude it, but we're going to extrude it as a whole. So if we do this right here as a cut and the depth, we don't want it all 24, we want about half of that. Or no, we actually want it 10. The bearing that we're going to stick in there is going to be 10 millimeters thick. So we're going to change that to 10 and we're going to click OK. And so we should have a bit of a hole that we made, but that doesn't go all the way through. OK, so you can see that it doesn't go all the way through. Now we need the exact same thing on the other side. So we could just do a drawing on this side and do it, but we're going we're gonna to do it a, a different technique. So what we're going to do, I'm going to hit Escape to get out of there. So what we're going to do is we're going to mirror that work that we just did. And so we have to pick the, pick the feature. So we're going to go ahead and mirror that that we just made. And the, the pl mirror plane is going to be our, let's see if we can find it. we got to figure out, it should be the axis that goes right through there. So the mirror plane is going to be the, not that one, not that one. Maybe it is that one. And then we're going to click, let's hit cancel. I don't see why I can't, f I can't seem to f figure out which one it is. It should be going right through this thing. So let's see what this plane is. Not that plane. It should be, oh, it should be the XZ plane. Okay, let's try it again. We know it's the XZ plane now. Okay, so we're going to do the mirror. The feature is going to be that work that we just did there with that cut. And then the mirror plane is going to be the XZ. And we're going to click OK. And so now if we flip flop it over, you can see that we did it on both sides. All right, so we'll make sure we save this thing properly. So we're going to go save as. Okay, we're going to save it as definitely not part nine. This is going to be the wheel. <coughs> and we're going to go ahead and save it in our inventor tutorials. I think I actually named the tire wheel one and the tire two wheel two. Those should have, that should have been tire one and tire two, so it's kind of confusing. So I'm going to make it a wheel actual, and I'm going to hit save. All right, that's it. Let's go ahead and be done. Show that.